So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Matthew Carmona to give the first presentation. Matthew. Thank you very much, Leo. So let me just share my screen. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Now, as uh, I'm sure you all know the white paper by now, it proposes essentially a move to a zonal system with these three zones. And uh, those uh, and those will be underpinned, as Leo says, by codes, different types of codes, particularly these sort of uh, local codes dealing for whole districts or boroughs. Now, we should be uh, uh, under no illusion that zoning can be an incredibly powerful tool. Um, but it can also be an incredibly cr crude tool, uh, you know, and, and tends to lead to results that miss the complexity and those sort of complex interrelationships of real cities. Coding can be equally powerful, but when we apply it across very large areas, for example, here in Tokyo, we have to be very confident that what we're coding is what we see because uh, coding can be such an effective uh, delivery tool. Now, many have made this point over the years that coding of any type is no panacea for good design. We can have good codes and we can have bad codes. What I've observed and what the research suggests is good codes tend to be site specific. They're created for particular sites and places rather than generic for whole areas, whole cities, for example. They tend to be used as a design tool, a creative tool, rather than as simply a regulatory tool. They're flexible because they're created as sites come forward, site by site, rather than inflexible produced uh, for a whole city at one time. They're tangible because they deal with those real places, those real areas or sites, so, so communities can potentially engage with them, rather than abstract. And they're gradual as sites come forward, rather than Big Bang, produced all at once when the plan is adopted. Both types of tool are effective at changing outcomes, delivering outcomes, but what the housing design audit showed is that only site-specific codes are effective at delivering design quality. The housing audit showed that they're five times more likely to lead to good or very good design outcomes than to poor or very poor design outcomes. And they do this simply because they guarantee that a designer, an urban designer, is involved in the scheme. If we look to continental Europe, then often we see some of the most sophisticated projects delivering sustainable urban design have codes, these site-specific codes, as part of the delivery mechanism. And drawing on one of Rob, Rob Cowan's great cartoons from over 15 years ago, this is an argument that we made 15 years back when the when previous government was interested in codes, and we produced preparing uh, design codes, a practice manual. What that argued is that these site-specific codes need to be prepared and deal across scales from settlement to built form, public realm and architecture. And they can do this by dealing with an integrated uh, range of factors in a holistic way, uh, dealing and delivering this sustainable urban design and de de delivering ultimately greater place value from development. They don't, of course, do this in isolation. They work with other tools, the strategic plan, highway standards, building regulations. But codes can have a role that uh, connects and moves across these different mechanisms to ensure that overall a good quality urbanism is delivered. If we look at practice in the last 15 years since that guide, that, or, that original guide was produced, then we see a number of different types of codes, and I've classified them in these ways. The first, I would say, is, is what I call control freakery. These are codes that are obsessed with aesthetics and, 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 and really nothing more. A, an example of that would be uh, Nan Sledden in, in Newquay. Newquay happened to feature on the front of the white paper. This is so detailed that it even specifies how, uh, uh, where you need to place the number on your door and that you can't have door names, for example, or house names on your doors. 
Then what I've called everything but the kitchen sink. These are incredibly sophisticated, often very detailed codes. Uh, a great example is uh, Eddington in northwest Cambridge, which runs to 303 pages, dealing with uh, the, the range of sustainable urbanism factors that I briefly uh, flashed up on an area-by-area -area basis. Very sophisticated, but very detailed. Another example uh, would be uh, at uh, Wichelstow in, in, in Swindon. Similar sort of detailed, sophisticated codes. This one doesn't deal area by area. It deals with a series of urban form typologies. And then my final category I've called integrated essentials. These are the sort of codes that I personally prefer because they're more paired back. They deal with the essential, uh, the essentials of delivering good urbanism rather than uh, with all the detail. I think a great example is at Graven Hill in Bicester, which is a self-built community. And because it's dealing with people who generally aren't part of the, uh, the building industry, it needs to be explained in a very simple and accessible way. And it achieves that in just 54 pages. So to conclude, what is the prize that we should be aiming at through these uh, white paper um, pres uh, 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 prescriptions? Well, the white paper, as Leo suggests, uh, proposes a national model design code, which is being produced at the moment by Urbed, and that hopefully will be a very valuable document helping local authorities to, or guiding them through the process of producing their own uh, codes. It then suggests that we should produce local design codes, and these would be district or borough-wide codes, uh, for uh, obviously large areas. I would suggest that more important might be the site-specific codes that I've talked about, and we should have two types. We should have the paired-back strategic coordinating codes, uh, which deal with those vital strategic factors, and then as phases come forward, we should we could have more detailed delivery codes dealing with uh, uh, the rest of the range of factors that I briefly uh, flashed up. These coordinating codes are particularly valuable because they're paired back and simple and they deal with particular sites and they allow public engagement. Because they're not dealing with all getting bogged down in all the detail, they're about the broad vision and about those essential parameters of place that communities can get can understand and getting involved with. And backing this up, we need design review to ensure that uh, the strategic and the more detailed principles are delivered as schemes come forward and are delivered over time. All this means, in my view, that we can get rid of these local design codes, district-wide design codes, preparing 350 of these all at once around the country uh, over a two-year period while we're trying to uh, adopt new zoning, uh, new zoning uh, local plans is just not going to happen. And I don't think they're necessary. Much better to produce these more sophisticated, site-specific uh, codes that people can understand and people can engage with. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matthew, answering the question on local authority-wide design codes there, which is uh, excellent. We'll come back to that in the debate, um, I'm sure.